Lady the Neville. Good morning, class. We're very happy to be back again to greet you again in that all-sufficient name of the Lord Jesus, trusting that you've had a great week of His praises and blessings. Just coming in this morning, I met a little boy there, and he gave me a little plaque of the guarding angel watching over two little children. And I didn't know that that was the Dalton, little Dalton boy. And here a few weeks ago, or a few, about two weeks ago, there was a father, Christian father, asked for his teenage daughter that was not yet a Christian while he was standing in the prayer line. And the Holy Spirit said to you, I, I give you your child. And here she is this morning, saved and baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, sitting on the platform, just as the Holy Spirit said. And the other children are all sitting around. I know the Dalton family is happy. See the little lady there that they had prayer for the baby last Sunday, thought was going to die. I see still with us this morning, and we're so happy for that, sister. And <clears throat> they thought it had muscular dystrophy, and it didn't have it. So we're very thankful to see all of our good friends. I remember this man here coming to me on a special interview at, at Chautauqua one time. I believe well, I had breakfast with you and your wife and children. I believe it, or you and your wife, or children, yes, too. Middletown. At, uh, well, we all, I forget that name, so I just call it Chautauqua, yes, sir. Many of my good friends, Brother Charlie Cox and Sister Nellie. Over here, he's been a second home to me, and nothing but it could be my own children. I go down there. That's where I spend most of my time of relaxing down there. He's the best squirrel hunter in Kentucky when I'm in Indiana. And so then, yeah. <laughs> and Charlie, I'm telling you, I'm just long and feeling awful, much like I ought to catch a few of them crappies or striped bass before I start up there. <laughs> really feel like I could stand it lots. Brother um, Harnell, uh, Harnett from um, South Carolina, and Brother, well, just so many different ones here from different places that come in this morning to visit with us. You know, we don't have any <coughs> regular membership here. We just have fellowship, one with Amen. the other. By the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Now, we are having a wonderful study, just glorious. And we are, at least I know I'm enjoying it, and I know all you are enjoying it too. Amen. I get started sometimes through the day to speak about it or read about it. I get about two verses, and I get started through the Scriptures, and the first thing you know... I've done been from Genesis to Revelation, still going. And um, you know, I'd like to take a time where we could, where we could get on the book of of Hebrews and take just like, well, when squirrel season comes in, by September, about August, you know, and go on through until time to go overseas, just each night on the book of Hebrews or the book of Exodus. Amen. How God, Exodus, bringing out His people out of Egypt. Yes. An Exodus, very beautiful type of us now getting ready for yes. our Exodus. Yes. It's, oh, it's such a beautiful thing. The whole Scripture just ties together as one big story. Amen. Now, this morning we're, we're still in the book of... We're going to take the first three chapters of... of the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the Ephesus, trying positionally placing the church. And just before we approach it, could we just spare another moment or two for prayer just before we do? O oh Lord our God, we are coming into thy presence now. As unworthy as we are, yet we know that there is a blood sacrifice there waiting, cleansing us from all uncleansedness and presenting us before the Father, blameless, faultless. 
Not nothing that we could ever do to merit this, but because that Jesus has done this for us, we bow humbly to his presence and his name, asking that you'll send the Holy Spirit this morning in our midst. And as not being a theologian or knowing how to set Scripture in order, but just enthused and grateful to the feeling of the Holy Spirit as it moves through my being. May it bless all of us together as we read thy written word, that it might become to us life eternal. Grant it, Father, we ask it in Jesus' name, and for Jesus' sake, amen. Amen. Now, I might say in here first that if any time that I might say something that would be disagreeable, not setting just right, may be absolutely wrong to your teaching, or something that you could not agree with, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit that He'll make it so seasoned and so sweet until there'll no be no offense at all. See that it'll it'll be through love and fellowship. That that's what it's it's meant that way. And this all began with the sermon last Sunday. I believe it was last Sunday morning as the rejected king. Have anybody got the tape yet? I think they've got them and. You can have him if you wish them, the rejected king. Now, just a few days, and we'll be beginning at up at uh, the Middletown, Ohio. We want all that has their, their vacation station for that time to be sure to meet with us there because we're expecting a great time of fellowship at uh, Middletown, Ohio. Dr. Sullivan is the chairman, I think, of the committee. And there'll be five nights of it. I'll be preaching as the, the, the guest speaker at the International Convention of the Interdenominational Church. And then, then after that will be our own meeting from then on. We have got it staged till the 12th, but under the understanding that we may go on through even another week after that. Just uh, depends on how the Holy Spirit leads. We all want to be led by the yes. Spirit. Amen. Just Amen. what the Spirit says do, then do it quickly. And let's remember while we're obeying the Spirit, one great lesson that we want to learn is never be hastily. Amen. See? Take your time. Have faith. If we have asked God anything, remember God answers prayer. He does it in His time. The way it's best makes it work just right for us. And if that isn't so, then what are we doing here this morning? What, what are we claiming Christianity for? God, if this isn't the Word of God, then it isn't true, then we are found among people most miserable. Yes. I'm so glad to join hearts with many here that know that this is the end fallible Word of God, Amen. then it, it is every word the truth, Amen. every word of it, every phase of it. And with the grace of God, have been privileged to view the land Amen. to which someday we shall travel. Hallelujah. Yesterday, people don't know what depressing times comes with this type of ministry. I got real depressed and I said to the wife, I wish I could just go on. She said, why do you say that, Bill? I said, oh, here I have troubles and things. And then it seemed like the Holy Spirit said, are you trying to bypass them? Are you, are you trying to dodge them? Thing. No, I said, just let me stand right up in the face of all of it and face it out. So you just think. It's so much better, honestly, truly, I say this by eyewitness that just after this life is over, we enter a land that's beyond anything that anyone could think. Amen. And if there be any strangers here, I trust that you do not 
I pray to God that you do not consider me a fanatic. I, I want, if anything, is to be honest and to yes. tell the truth. And yes. what good would it do me to tell something that was wrong when there's so there's so much to share as this truth? We why we have to tell anything wrong about it? See, it's it's just truth, and no wonder. I believe Paul was caught up into the third heaven. Yes. And he saw things that it wasn't expedient for him to speak of. And one day he said, I has not seen, ears not heard, or has it either entered the heart of man what God has for them in store that love him. Oh, we're just living. We're living in a dump pile down here. That's all. Just a rubbish heap full of, of smoldering smoke from filth of, even if we are not contaminated with it ourselves. We are living in it where the smoke is coming from smoking emeralds of sin. One of the most sickening things I can think of is an old city dump of burning. Was you ever near one? That horrible contaminated smell of smoke coming up through all kinds of filth. And you get a breath of it and it just turns you around. I remember having to go down to New Albany, down on the below 18th Street there where the old dump used to be, and I'd have to collect down in there and read meters. And I just dreaded the day when I was Route 18 when I had to take that down in there because it was the smell, that horrible smell. And yet, laying out on there was bodies of rats and dogs and everything, you know, that was smoldering and that old smoke coming up to it. Now, yet that is what this life is compared to at its best. Just a smoldering sin just smells from everywhere as it was spiritually speaking. Yes, amen. But all where the wind is blowing free and everything is lovely and peace and joy and Eternal life just across the river, but we're in a battle. So let's not just lay down and say, let's hurry up and get over there. Let's bring everyone with us that we can bring. And now the purpose of these lessons is to anchor those that have already come across the land. The purpose of the study in this book of Ephesians is to positionally place the church where it absolutely stands in Christ. It is a type of the Old Testament and the book of Joshua where Joshua lauded last Sunday we had it where Joshua lauded the lands to each man. And he had done it by inspiration. How Moses was brought the people out of Egypt, the garlic leek, out and gave them a place to where God had promised 400 years later, or 400 years before, that He would bring them into a place, a goodly land, flowing with milk and honey. And Moses led the children of Israel right up to the land, but did not take them over. And Jesus, to the spiritual, to the people that we have been promised the Holy Spirit since the beginning. Jesus led us up to the promise, but the Holy Spirit came at Joshua to take over and lead and direct and to possess the land or possess the church. Amen. We find out basically then that in our... Now here's where maybe... People might think that I am rude and trying to disregard brethren. I am not. God be my judge, I am not. See, I'm only trying to point out something that is a truth. Yes. See, we have chosen leaders of man instead of leading, leaders, leadings of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have wanted man to lot out our part and to yes. lead us. Amen. Denominations like Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Church of Christ, 
Pentecostal and different denominations to set an organization as an example, and we follow that. But we are nowhere in the Bible are we to do such as that. There isn't one text of Scripture in all of God's Bible where He ever organized a church or where He ever spoke of an organization. Not one place in the Bible, but always contrary to it. He doesn't want us to be fashioned like the things of the world. He wants us peculiar, set aside. I don't mean now to be silly as we call it. I mean to be a called out people. Amen. Oh, a blessed holy nation. Living lives that's above reproach. Acting, behaving ourselves just like He would working in us for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Now, Wednesday night, many of you wasn't here Wednesday night, but we got into the, I believe it's the third verse. uh, No, it's the fifth verse. Unto the adoption or placing of the people. How did God trying to place His people? And when God places one, then all the whole church wants to be like that one. Have the same kind of things. Do the same things. We are cut out different. We're made different. We are nature different. And we are positionally placed different. Each one for a different work. Maybe one for just a little kind of a work. Another for a large work. I believe it was... David or one of the prophets, I forget now, said, I would rather be a amen. doormat at the house of the Lord yes, amen. than to be to dwell in the tents with the, uh, the wicked. Yes. Now we're going to stop just a second on the adoption to fifth verse, trying to get down as far as we possibly can on it. But now remember the theme. It is altogether on placing. How many understands that? Let's hear you say it with one word. Placing. placing. The, body the body of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Positionally, Positionally. In Christ. In Christ. Where the Holy Spirit Spirit is leading us. us. There you are. Now we got it. See, positionally placing us. The book of Ephesus is to do that. And watch this master teacher, Paul. The first thing he does is knock out all the idea of falling away. Yes. 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 Amen. Knock out all the idea of ever being a Christian today and tomorrow I'm gone and the next day God's condemned me and the next day I'm back again. That's nonsense. Amen. 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 Now this this book is not addressed to evangelistic teaching, evangelist sermons. We don't, I don't touch this on the fields. I bring this to the church. For Paul addressed it to the saints those that are called and preserved and are filled and are set aside and are in the Holy Spirit already in Canaan's land, he's trying to tell them the first thing, get it out of your mind. Amen. That you're going to get lost and you're going to do this and you're scared of this. Don't be scared of nothing. Amen. For he's trying to tell you where you're at who you are, how you're standing. Now, you might do things wrong, and every time you do anything wrong, you are going to get paid for it. Amen. Yes, sir, you reap what you sow. But that has not one thing to do with your salvation. When you're born by the Spirit of God, you got eternal life Amen. and can no more die than God can die. Amen. You're part of God, you're son of God. Amen. 
I was born to Branham. You might make me some other name. Some other name won't make me one less. I'm still Branham. I was born Branham. Always will be Branham. I'll, I may be so disfigured someday, draw with arthritis, I have a wreck and all tore up till I look like an animal, but I'll still be Branham. Wow, Branham blood's inside. That's what you are. And as long as God has made you... Now remember, I'm not talking to those outside of Christ. I'm talking to those that are in Christ. Amen. How do you get in Christ? By one Spirit. Yes. Capital S-P-I-R, which means by one Holy Spirit. We are all baptized into one body. How, are we, how do we get in by water baptism? How disagreeable I am with you Baptists and you Church of Christ. Not by water baptism, by no means. 1 Corinthians 12 said, By one Spirit, Holy Spirit, are we brought into that body and are just as safe as that body safe? Amen. God is promised to... How could God judge him again? When he went to Calvary, going up Golgotha, he was beaten, bruised, he could not heal, he could not even speak a word hardly, because why? He had the sins of the world on him. Amen. Not because that he was a sinner, but he was made sin for me and for you. Uh. All the sins of the world from Adam until his coming rest upon his shoulder. And God was not punishing his son. He was punishing sin. Yes. See how horrible it was. He was making a propitiation. He was making a way of escape for all those that God by his foreknowledge know would come. We're going to get into that in a few minutes. Now, then when you're by one Spirit we're baptized into that body, one body which is Christ, and we are safe forever. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Now there's where it seems to strangely strike, especially the, the, the Armenian believers, that they are, have to do something that to merit their self or some meritorial something how can it be by two things at the same time? Oh, yeah. It's either by grace or by works one. Right. It can't be by the same thing. It's by two different things. It's got to be by the one. Amen. It's uh, my, I just can't see nothing else but the grace of God. Amen. That, that's my makeup. I always did believe in grace. I miss grace all over. That's all. It isn't, I, I, even in my life when I was a boy, I couldn't see nothing. It's grace, grace. They say, I, I'll, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Well, it's an awful expression. But I don't care whether you scratch mine or not. If yours needs scratching, I'll scratch it anyhow. Amen. See? Amen. Grace. Amen. Yes, Amen. sir. Amen. It, grace works by love. Amen. If you need it, regardless, if you've never done nothing for me, I... I don't have one thing to do with it. If you need it, I'll do it anyhow. Amen. Grace. Because that you need it. I needed saving. Amen. There was nothing could save me. There was nothing I could do about myself. I could no more save myself than nothing. But I needed saving because I believed in a God. God sent His Son, made in the likeness of sinful flesh, to suffer in my place and... I was saved by grace alone was I saved. Amen. Not one thing could I do or you do to save yourself. And those who He foreknew before the foundation of the world, we've been into it. Last Wednesday we pictured God in His Elah Elohim and showed that He was self-existence, but inside of Him was fatherhood. Inside of Him was different merits such as a Savior, such as a healer. That was all in God, and God was self-existence. 
But being that he was a savior, he was if he didn't have an angel, he didn't have nothing. There was nothing but himself. He was self-existence. Nothing else existed but God. But being that he was God, then there must be something to worship him because he loved to worship. And his all being created creatures to worship him. Now temporarily, let's hit it again. Temporarily now, we won't go through the whole thing, but you'll get it on the tapes. But then because that he was God, he made angels, and angels worshipped him. Angels still worship him. Amen. While the angels that stand in the presence of God has six sets of wings. Six wings. They carry two over their face, two over their feet, and fly with two in His presence, crying day and night, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Amen. That's what the Scripture said. They worshipped Him. Now, that created something to worship Him. Then inside of Him was an attribute of Savior. How could one of those creatures, when there was no sin or no thoughts of sin... How could one of them be lost? It couldn't be. So there had to be something made that could be lost so that he could be a Savior. Inside of him is a healer. Do you believe he's a Savior? Yeah. you believe he's a healer? Yeah. Or was there wasn't nothing to save or heal? See, there had to be something made that way. So Now, he never made it that way, but he put man on free moral agency. If you take this, you live. If you take that, you die. And every man that comes into the world is still set with the same thing. God, by His foreknowledge, knew who would and who would not. If God being... The question was asked yesterday by a theologian to me that's been tending the meetings or hearing the tapes. said, one question. He said, then is God ominous present. Then he said he can be everywhere. I said he is not ominous present in the way that the Word speaks ominous present. He cannot be a being and then be an ominous present. If he's ominous present, why would you pray for the Holy Spirit? If he's ominous present, he feels every crack, corner, crevice, every cell, fiber, everything else there is. I said, why did he hunt for Moses if he's ominous present? At the end. Why did he run up and down the Garden of Eden crying, Adam, Adam, where art thou? If he's omnipresent. Amen. <laughs> he's omnipresent because he's omnipresent. He knows everything. Because he's infinite. Being infinite makes him omnipresent. Being omnipresent then being infinite then he sits in the heavens. He abides in a place because he is a being. But being infinite, then he knows all things. Knowing every time a gnat bats its eye. Know every bumblebee where he goes into the cone to get his honey. He knows every sparrow that sits in the tree. He knows every thought that's in your mind. Because he is infinite. An ominous uh, mission. That is he, not only is he infinite... He's ominous mission. He knows everything. But He is a being. God is a being. And out of this being begin to bring forth these. And sin, I said the other night, sin is not a creation. There is nothing created but perfection. God created all things good. Sin is not a creation. said, well, that's the very creation of sin. You've heard that. Well, that's an error. Sin, there's only one Creator, that's God. God could not create sin because He's holy and there's nothing in Him to make it. Sin is perversion. Not creation, but it's perversion. An adultery is a righteous act perverted. A lie is a truth told wrong. Any sin... Any sin is righteousness perverted. Therefore, now God sets. He's already manifested Himself. He's God. 
He's already manifested himself as a Savior. Man was lost and he saved him. He's already manifested himself as a healer. Don't make any difference what people say he is, and he is anyhow. Just the same. He's a healer. He's a Savior. He's God. He's eternal. And he has a purpose. And a, his purpose was in the beginning to make creatures that would love him and worship him. And he made creatures, and creatures fell. And then God, by his infancy, looked down through the stream of time and saw every man that would be saved. Yes. Amen. Every man he knew it by, fore, by foreknowledge. Amen. Therefore, if he by foreknowledge knew who would be saved and who would not be saved, he could predestinate. Amen. So the word's not such a bad word after all, is it? He could predestinate because he knew who would and who would not. Therefore, in order to catch those who would, he had to make a, a propitiation for their sins. Oh, if we can, we ought to get to it. Just a few verses below. He predestinated us to eternal life, knowing that those who would lay aside everything, and no matter how indifferent it would look towards the children of the world, it wouldn't mean one thing to them because Amen. they were children Amen. of God. Amen. And He called them. And He sent Jesus that His blood might be an atonement, blood atonement, to make a propitiation or a, an exception or a cleansing, a cleansing process to constantly... Amen. Amen. Not just one time and one revival, Amen. but ever living... Amen. Making intercessions that the Christian is kept clean day and night. Amen. There is the blood of Jesus Christ that makes a, an exception on the cross that in the presence of God that cleanses us constantly day and night from all sins. And we are safely tucked in. Tucked in how? By the Holy Spirit into the body of the Lord Jesus and save. He that heareth my words and believeth on him and set me has everlasting life and shall never come into the judgment, but has passed from death unto life. Amen. No more judgment. The Christian never goes to the judgment. Christ went for him. My attorney stood in my place. Yes. He pleaded my case and I was ignorant. Amen. He told the Father that I wasn't worthy and I was ignorant, but He loved me and He took my place and pleaded my case and today I'm free. Amen. Yes, sir. And He shed His blood to offer there for our sins. Remember last Wednesday night? No Christian, Christian sins. But a sinner cannot sin. A sinner doesn't sin because he's a sinner. He's just a sinner to begin with and that's all. Here, take the, the back of this book. It's black. How much of that is black? It's all black. There's just no white to it. It's black. You say, this much here. No, I mean, it's the whole thing's black. It's just all black. That's the way a sinner is. He's just condemned to start with. Amen. Well, you say, what about if he commits adultery? What if he ravishes some woman? What if, he, what if he gambles? What if he shoots somebody? That's none of our business. That's none of our business. We got laws down here to take care of that. Amen. We're not reformers. Amen. We're preachers of the gospel. Amen. Amen. We don't condemn him for what he done. We don't condemn him for committing adultery. We condemn him because he's a sinner. Yes. If he's a Christian, he wouldn't do it. Amen. That's right. If he's been changed, he won't do that. Amen. But because he is a sinner, that's what makes him do that. That's what knocks the props out from under legalist. Yes. 
Amen. Yes, sir, brother. Let me tell you, it's not by works, but Amen. by grace are we saved Amen. and not by faith. Amen. Yes, sir. Now, I don't condemn legalists, brethren. They're my brothers, and they'll be there just the same as any of the rest of them will be there. Because God's foreordained His church to be there. <laughs> but just the thing, you, you keep the people so tore up, they don't know what today. Well, maybe if I... I just let them know as long as they got the hunger of the world, they're not there to begin with. I don't live true to my wife because I think she'd divorce me. I live true to my wife because I love her. Amen. It's a legal uh, a position that we have taken that we love one another. First, before it could be there, it had to be a love. Yes. I love her. <laughs> Although I believe if I'd done something wrong, she'd forgive me. Still, I wouldn't do it anyhow. I love her. Amen. That's what it is with Christ. If I, do, if I live... Uh, I'm 50 if I live to be in a 90 or 100. Have another 50 years to preach. And I never preach a time to go down and sit on the river. I'm saved anyhow. Amen. Amen. God saved me by His grace unmerited of anything I ever could do, did do, or anything else. I preach because I love Him and I love His people and I, that's the reason I know I pass some death into life because that I love them and I, I go after them no matter what kind of condition they're in. I go after them anyhow. Go get them anyhow. Pull them anyhow. If ministers disagree and others disagree and denominations disagree, that don't stop me. There's something... It didn't stop him. He come right in the midst of unbelief and it didn't stop him. He moved right on anyhow. That's what we do. Go out and get them. Catch them anyhow. No matter reach, grab hold on with all your might. You don't know who they are. Save them. That's because of love. Not because that I have to, but because I love. Because you love. Say, I ought to go make that right with that woman, but I'll tell you right now, I guess because I go to church, I ought to go make it right. <laughs> no, you're the one who ought to get right first. <laughs> if you ain't got the love of God in your heart, something that makes you know that you're wrong, then you go, then you go make it right with God. Then you'll make it right with your neighbor. Jesus taught the same thing. He said, if you come to an altar and there's a... Remember, there's an altar against the neighbor or the brother. Go make it right with him first. Yes. Now, now, in the ages that has to come, we had Wednesday night, the manifestations, we catch it again this morning, in the manifestations of the sons of God, that where God is waiting... And then at the end time, when we all stand before Him, angels wasn't lost. They won't know how to enjoy the blessings as we do. They never was lost. But I know what I come from. I know the rock where I was hewed from, a sinner. You know where you was hewed from. Now, when we're found, then we can stand before God. Oh, what a day that will be. Then adoption... Placing. Now God's doing this on a work. Now if I can get this to you, and then we'll start right on now. The fifth verse, I want to read it. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, to Himself according to His own good pleasure of His will, it's God's pleasure to do His will. Adopting. Placing. Now, what's he doing? Placing his church. First, he called his church. Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Baptist, calling them. Then what did he do? He sent forth the Holy Spirit and give them the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want you Pentecostal people to get this out of your hearts. Pentecost is not a denomination. Amen. Pentecost is an experience. Yes, sir. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost. It's not an organization. Amen. You could organize the Holy Ghost. Amen. He won't stand for it. 
Now, you've got an organization that you call that, but the Holy Ghost moves right out and lets you sit right where you're at and right. just keeps on going. See? Yeah. Pentecost is not an organization. Pentecost is an experience. Amen. And then God gave His children new birth by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They came right near it when they cleaned themselves up to Nazarene pilgrim holiness. They come into the experience of Pentecost of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the restoration of the gifts. They went forth speaking with tongues and interpret tongues and giving gifts of healings and miracles and signs and wonders begin to accompany them. Now, there are children. They're God's children. They're positionally in Christ. They become children by birth. And the new birth and the conversion itself is the Holy Ghost. Amen. You're not even converted till you get the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 That's what the Scripture said. Amen. Jesus told Peter, Ask anyone, read your Scripture. He was justified by believing on the Lord Jesus, become a follower and apostle. Jesus gave him the keys to the kingdom. And in John 17, 17, he sanctified them, gave them power, sent them out, cast out devils and things. Sanctify them. Sanctify them, Father, through thy truth, thy word is the truth. Yes. I sanctify myself because of them. That's one of the sweetest words that I ever heard. Amen. Father, I sanctify myself for their sake. Do you know he had a right to have a home? He was a human. You know, right, he had a right to have a wife? He was a man. He had a right to all these things. But he said, Father, I sanctify myself for their sake. I sanctify myself. I talked to a little preacher yesterday. Go to preach for him in a few nights up here on the highway. And I asked him about a certain thing. He said, yes, Brother Bram, but the most of my people doesn't believe in that. I said, most all of them legalists? Yes. Brother doesn't believe that. But he said, for their sake. Oh, I want to hug his neck. For their sake. Amen. I sanctify myself for their sake. Oh, Jesus was training twelve men that through those twelve men was to take the gospel to the world. And he said, For their sake I sanctify myself. Praise God. Make yourself for your neighbor's sake. For somebody else's sake. Don't use your liberty for a cloak, said Paul. But sanctify yourself. Behave yourself in the neighborhood like a real Christian ought to. Let your communications be. If you meet your enemy, sanctify yourself for his sake, not knowing what you might do. Now, placing the sun. First thing, after the sun was in, he become a son. But then we find out his behavior is what set him to adoption whether he behaved right or not. And it's a, the Pentecostal. Now, just let me show you that Pentecost is not a denomination. How many Baptists in here that was Baptists that received the Holy Ghost? Let's see your hands. See? Man. How many Methodists that's in here that received the Holy Ghost? Raise up your hands. Amen. How many uh, Nazarenes in here received the Holy Ghost? Raise up your hands. Presbyterians receive the Holy Ghost. See? Amen. Lutheran. Other denominations that did not belong in the Pentecost at all. Just belong to some denomination. Receive the Holy Ghost. Let's see your hand. See? So then Pentecost is not a denomination. It's an experience. Amen. Now God took you into the body of Christ. Now what does He do? After you have proved yourself, sanctified yourself with your good behavior, obedience to the Holy Spirit, no matter what the world says. I, I'm going to rub this really hard. See? Because I don't mean it to be rude. I, I, please don't 
don't don't really don't really think that I'm I'm mean. I, I don't want to be. What worries me is to take people and preach to them this God sent truth. And they'll turn right back around and just keep on doing the same thing and say they got the Holy Ghost. That just nearly ruins you. What's the matter? They come right back to the same thing. Just like the children of Israel, they wanted a king so this king could rule over them and make them act like the Amorites and the Amalekites and the Philistines. Do you know, ladies, that it's wrong to wear slacks? Do you know that? you know it's wrong to cut the locks of your hair off? Do you know it's wrong, mister, for you to continue to smoke and act the way you do? Do you know it's wrong for you not to be the husband of your house? Your wife get a little temper spell and kick you out the door and you say, Yes, bless your heart, honey, I'll come right back. Do you know you? How can you be a tender at the house of God when you can't even control your own house? That's exactly right. Do you know, sister, that your husband is not only your husband, but he is your ruler? Amen. God said so, because that the husband was not deceived, the woman was deceived. And you preachers will continue to make women pastors and preachers in your churches knowing that the Word of God condemns it. Amen. You'll Amen. continue to use that name, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost to baptize when there's not one speck of Scripture for it in the Bible. Amen. Right. Amen. I want an archbishop or somebody else to show me where anybody in the Bible was ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want somebody to show me anybody was ever baptized anyway besides the name of Jesus. But John's wasn't baptized. They were baptized believing that he was coming, but they didn't know who he was. But as soon as they recognized that, they had to come to be re-baptized again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want somebody to... I, I've asked the assemblies of God, the other preachers, the Baptist, Presbyterian and everything. They won't, they won't talk about it. I want to see the Scripture. And then I'm a fanatic, huh? Then I'm crazy out of my mind. I'm a madman. Just because I'm trying to tell you the truth. Amen. Now that's, that's honest, brother. Yes, sir. If a man is sold out for God, you sold out lock, stock, Amen. and barrel. You, you, you're, you're, you're set aside. Amen. You're a different creature. Yes. Many are called, few are chosen. Yeah, that's good. Just many people are called. You get a calling in your heart. Yes, I believe God loves me. I believe He does it. But brother, that you're going to be as far lost as the rest of them because they'll come there that day even saying, Lord, I've cast out devils in your name. I've done everything else in your name. I've had healing services. I've preached the gospel. I've cast out devils. And Jesus said, Get away from here. I don't even know you, hypocrites. It's He that doeth the will of my God. Why can't people see it now? I know that rubs, and I don't. I don't mean it to hurt. I don't mean it to be that way. But brother, I, I looks to me like we're we're at the end time. We are. And God is adopting, setting positionally in church, in the body of Christ. Is now there's not going to be too many you put in there. I'm going to tell you that to begin with. Amen. You say, oh, well, there's going to be such a great number, but he's had 6,000 years to pull them out of, too. Yeah. Remember, the resurrection comes and we're caught up with them. Yeah. Just a few of them. Amen. You search out your salvation quickly. Look yourself over and see what's gone wrong. See just, just what's the matter. I know that's, that's hard. But, brother, it's the truth. Yes, it is. It's God's truth. Adoption. We should be so on fire for God. We should be going day and night. Nothing should be able to stop us. And we should be so sweet and so pleasant and so kind and so Christ-like in our lives. 
It takes every day's life. Jesus said, Consider the lily of the field, how it grows, tall and spinning. Yet I say unto you that Solomon, all of his glory, is not arrayed like one. Solomon had robes that was arrayed with glorious silk and needlework and things, but that, that, didn't, that wasn't what he's talking about. In order for a lily to grow, it has to toil both day and night. What do you want to come up back here on the little end of the line for? If the righteous be scarcely saved, where will the sinner, that's the unbeliever, and the ungodly, the man that hears the word refuses to walk in it? Now, what are we going to do? Now, that this is, this is our church. We've got maybe a, a four or five strangers among us. But this is the church I'm teaching you. This goes on tapes. I want people to listen to tapes to remember this is to my church. Out amongst the people out here, I try to be gentleman enough to tell them uh, to, to kind of stay along where they can baby along in their little bitty skim milk ideas. But when it comes to really laying the truth down, let's lay it down. Amen. Amen. Adoption, placing positionally. Where are they at? Show me where they're at. God calling His children to sign. By manifestation. They don't have to say one word about it. You see something's happened. Yes. Yeah. Positionally placing His Son, giving Him into order just exactly with the same things. He's just as much authority as word, just as good as an archangel. Better. The Son was adopted, put on a high place, set out there, changed His robes, changed His colors. The Father had a ceremony and said, This is my Son. From henceforth, He's governor. He's a ruler. He's over all my heritage. All that I got belongs to Him. <clears throat> That's right. Amen. Now we can go back to the same Ella, Ella, Elohim. Elohim. See, where He's self existent and come back to Jehovah who made something. He gave man dominion over the earth. Yeah. What are we waiting for? The manifestations of earth is groaning. Let's get down to it and read it. All right, predestinates to the adoption of children, but himself according to his good pleasure of his will. To the, pla- to the praise of it, the glory of his grace. What is his grace? Back before when he was the Father, his grace, his love, made himself a child. That we might be predestinated unto the adoption of children to the praise of His grace. Uh, See? Where we He has made us acceptable by Thee, Thee, the person, beloved, which is Christ, made us accepted how? By Him, how we get in Him, by one Spirit, all baptized into Him. Listen. In whom we have redemption, we have redemption through the his blood, the forgiveness of S I N S. How can you preach predestination of God's foreordaining and setting unless there's a sin atonement somewhere? Why is it each day you make a mistake, each day you do wrong, but if you're born again, man or woman, as soon as you make the mistake, God knows you're sorry for it. Amen. You'd stand in the presence of, of President Roosevelt or anyone else and say, I'm wrong. God, forgive yes. me for this thing. Why? Amen. And there's a blood atonement. You notice that S-I-N-S. A sin is a sinner. He does not commit sins, but the church commits sins. Yes. Does wrong. Gets the wrong thought, wrong impression, makes scruples, wobbles like a little child walking, trying to learn how to walk. He just don't know how to walk good yet because he's a little boy. But we have a hand that reaches down if we gets us and steadies us and say, make this step this way, son. He doesn't pick us up and spank us because we made a mistake. He doesn't beat us to death because we're trying to walk. He loves us like we love our children. A real, a real daddy wouldn't whip his child when he's trying to walk if he falls down the floor. Reach right down with a big strong hand and pick him up. 
take both hands to hold her and say, this is what you do it, son. Amen. Walk like this. Amen. That's the way God does His church. Yes. Reaches down and gets him in his arms. Yes. Picks him up and says, walk like this, son. Yeah, don't, don't, don't say it like that. Talk it like this. I don't care what the church says, what this says, what that says. You say it like this. Amen. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. My word preaches that you stay right with it. Walk with it. Stay right with it. Don't care what everybody else says. Stay right with it. Walk like this. This is the way you make your steps. Our sins. An atonement. Therefore, our sins or we'd never have a chance. How we could just anchor on them words. According to the riches of His grace, wherein He he has abounded... What is abound? Oh, my. For he has a bounded great heaps of it. <laughs> he has a bounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Prudence. All the wisdom he has abounded towards us with all wisdom, not worldly. The wisdom of the world is foolish to him. Amen. And the wisdom of God is foolish to the world. Yeah. Just like day and night, one can't agree with the other. But when the sun begins to rise and daytime comes, yeah. night scatters from place to place. Amen. And when the light of the gospel begins to come in, all the things of the world just begins to fade out. And what does it do? He abounds the sunlight yeah. upon his children. Walking in the Spirit, led of the Spirit of God, abounding in His grace with all prudence and wisdom, understanding and shrewdness to know how to walk. Yes, amen. You see it's wrong, then be careful what you do. How you, if it's wrong, be careful even how you approach it. <clears throat> prudence. Be real close, real sure that you know how to approach it. Wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Oh, these are nuggets. Amen. 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 We well, just stay on day after day. Aren't they wonderful? Yes. Yes. Prudence. Yes. Wisdom. He's abounded towards us. Glory. Pour it out. Not give us a spoonful, but tuck a big scoop and shovel. And just kept throwing it like that. Amen. Abounded towards us. Wisdom Amen. with prudence of His grace. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Now, where when He is abounded towards us in all wisdom, prudence, having made known to us the mystery of His will. Who is He talking to? Denominations? Please, my brethren, don't think I'm downing your denomination. I'm not. I'm trying to tell you it was the wrong thing to start with. Jesus said, go preach the gospel. We went and made denominations. That's the reason we haven't got it. We're walking after the wisdom of man. If Calvin could rise. I stood not long ago by the grave of a great man, a great reformer. And I thought what a great man he was. He was. Well, I want to, it was John Wesley. And I thought if John Wesley could rise from this grave today and see the condition of his church, Amen. he'd be ashamed of his name. Amen. John Wesley was a godly man. A firebrand snatched, as he called it. John Wesley was a holy man who believed in God and walked step by step after him. But after John died, they said, we'll make a church to John. So we'll have a church and we'll call it the Methodist Church because of his method of sanctification being the second work of grace. Then they made a church. And today, them church men deny everything that John Wesley stood for. Yes, that's right. John Wesley preached divine healing. Amen. John Wesley believed in the baptism of the Spirit. Amen. John Wesley believed in all the restoration of the gifts. Amen. John Wesley, Martin Luther, many of those great men spoke in tongues and interpreted. Amen. Amen. 
And today you would speak in tongues in a Methodist church or Lutheran church to kick you out the door. Right. What's the matter? God. Right in the time where we ought to be placing sons. What is the matter? They have adopted something else because they don't know the mystery of God. And they'll never know it through a seminary. Let me just read something to you. Is it all right? All right. Let us turn over. i got something to roll down here. Let's find out how Paul... Now, here, here's the teacher of this message. Let's go to Acts 9.5, just a minute. Listen to how Paul got this revelation. Whatever happened. Now, in Acts 9, we start reading like this. It's a Sunday school class, so why not? Why not read it? Let me know when I'm out there. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings, all that little hook-nosed, top-tempered, mean Jew. Slaughterings against the disciples of the Lord. Went into the high priest and desired him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any, I'll go look them up. If I can just find them, boy, what I'll do to them. If I can just find them. But he was predestinated. Amen. How do you know that old bootlegger down here is not predestinated to life? How do you know that old street walker that you won't even speak to? Amen. How do you know that a little hand shaking and invited her to church wouldn't make a saint of God out of her Amen. yonder in the glory? Would How do you know she's not? That's, right. that's what we don't know. Amen. But that's our duty. Amen. Like a fisherman throwed a net into the sea and pulled out, he brought frogs, fish, lizards, water spiders, and everything else, but some of them was fish. Amen. He didn't know he just cast the net. That's what we do. Amen. Watch Paul. Desiring letters to the masters to the synagogues that if he found any in this way, whether they were men or women, he might bind them and bring them to Jerusalem. Brother, he was really rough. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined around him. There came a priest up the road, Dr. F.F. F. Jones, and said to him, you need a a seminary experience now, son, and I believe God could use you. Wouldn't that be a horrible looking scripture to read it like that? <laughs> now, that's just as much sense. I ain't saying that for a joke. That's, we, that's just as much sense as what we get out of it today. Amen. You know, your mother was a good woman. I believe you'd make a good preacher. Watch what happened. And, this, and as he journeyed, he came near to Mass, and suddenly there shined around him about a light. Starts off supernatural. A light from heaven. And he fell to the earth. And he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said unto him, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. And it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembled and was astonished and said, Lord, what will thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise. And go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou shalt do. Yes. And the man journeyed with him and went on, and they found a man, Ananias. Down there saw a vision, all supernatural. Yes. Oh, Saul, that old mean guy. This Ananias saw a vision, looked in his house. He was a prophet in his house praying, and he saw a vision. His Lord spoke to him and said, There's a man coming down the road over here. He's just as blind as a bat. And his name is Saul. He's Saul of Tarsus. He said, Lord, I've heard great things. Don't send me. I'm a little man. Don't send me after him. He said, but behold, on his road down, I show him a vision. I appeared to him in the pillar of fire. I struck him as blind as he can be. And I had to blind him and tear him up before I could make anything out of him. See? I had to turn off his theology. You know, he, he, was, he was a great fellow in one of those churches up there. He had all kinds of degrees. He didn't have to polish up on anything. But he said, what I had to do is take it all out of him. Yeah. That was the thing. It wasn't give more into him, but take it out of him. Yeah. I think that's what's the matter. A lot of our clergymen today is take out of him where God can put in him the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Take out. There, he said, he, and he said, Lord, but this, this, this man's a terrible man. He said, but behold, he prayeth. Now you'll go down through a certain street and you'll come to a fountain. You pass that fountain on the left and you go down, there'll be a white house. 
Boy would knock on the door and just look way in there in the hall. That's as far as they ever got him. Lay your hands up on him. Take him down to the river of Damascus and baptize him in the name of Jesus. Because I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He's going to have to suffer many things for me, for he is my messenger to the Gentiles. Amen. 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 Well, now, wait a minute, Lord. Now, what school should I advise? <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's do, let's read Galatians and find out. Just the next, next chapter right back. Let's find Galatians 1 and begin at the 10th verse. And let's find out what school Paul went to. What seminary and whose hands is laid on him. And all, all took place. Galatians, the first chapter. To save time, let's begin about his conversion, the 10th verse. For do I now persuade man or God? Or do I seek to please man? For if I seek yet to please man, I be not the servant of Christ. Oh, my, my, my. May I just say a little something before this year? Galatians 1, get the 8th chapter. How many knows that Paul was the one that made them people be baptized over again in Jesus' name? Amen. Acts 19. Sure did. Let's take it just a little above here. The 8th eighth, eighth verse. Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Ever, where'd you get this gospel, Paul? The ninth verse. We said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel to you than that which you have heard received, let him be accursed. If he's an archangel, if he's a bishop, if he's a general overseer, if he's Dr. So-and-so, whoever he is, if he doesn't preach the water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, doesn't preach the restoration of the gifts, the coming of Christ, all these things, let him be a curse. Yeah. If he tries to take any of this word here and say it was for another day and place it over on some new fangangle idea that we learned off in some seminary, let him be a curse. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's read on. See how Paul got it. See how what I'm trying to say to you this morning. For do I now persuade man or God? Or do I seek to please man? For if I yet please man, then I not be the servant of Christ. Right. How can I expect anything? How can a man that loves God, and a preacher especially, expect to do anything but be hated by man? Amen. That's right. Amen. Man will hate you. Yes. Well, they sa- Jesus said, if they call me the master of the house, I'm the master. The greatest of all of you. I'm the one who can perform more miracles and do more with the Holy Spirit than all of you because i got the whole fullness in me. Amen. And if they call me Beelzebub, how much more are they going to call you? Yes. But said, so don't take no thought what you'll be saying. For it'll not be you that speaks. Amen. It'll be the Father that dwells in you to the speaking at that time. Yes. Just stay right with the Word. Yes. And he, when he got to writing the book, he said, Any man that'll take one word out of this book or add one word to it, the same will be taken out of the book of life for him. Amen. God help us to stay right with it. Amen. Now, the next verse. Let me read, and I'll read quickly now. But I certify, let's take you to judgment. I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Amen. I'm neither Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, or Pentecostal. It was not after man, neither for I neither received it of man. Mm-hmm. Neither was I taught it. I never received it from man, no seminary. No doctor, no divinity, no school of education. I never received it that way. I never taught it that way. I never found it that way. It never come to me that way. How did it come then, Paul? Taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. When Christ revealed Himself to me that He was the Son of God, when that pillar of fire fell upon me that day. I said, Who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. I'm going to share what, what happened to him. Now, right now, if a fellow had experience, they'd want to give him ten years to learn Greek and uh, ten more years to learn uh, something else. And by that time, he's gone. Look. Neither received it, our man. Neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ, far 
Ye have heard of my uh, conversations and times past in the Jewish religion. I was a big doctor, boy. I had it. He was taught under Gamaliel, the highest teacher that they had in the land. How many knows that Gamaliel was one of their greatest, greatest teachers? Amen. Yes, sir. My Jewish religion, boy, I had it down. I knowed all how to say the Apostles' Creed and all those things, you see. I knowed how to say all the morning prayers and to bless the people. Amen. How that beyond measure then I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Mm-hmm. How that I tried to stop that bunch of holy rollers. <laughs> and I profited in the Jewish religion. I was a great man. Boy, I really, I profited. I showed them I could smash them down because I killed Stevens and a whole lot of other things I've done. See how i done. How the beyond measure he persecuted. I profited in the Jewish religion above many my equal in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of the fathers. Now, remember, not the Word of God, the tradition of the fathers. Yeah. Tradition of the church, in other words. Yeah. I just, I was a Methodist to the core. I was a Baptist to the core. I was a Pentecostal to the core. Yeah. Or oh, you are. Yeah. I want to be God to the core. Yeah. That, that's it. Yeah. All right. Traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God. Oh, oh Paul, here you come. <laughs> who separated me from my mother's womb, who even brought me to this world, and called me by His grace to reveal His Son in me. How is that? The Holy Spirit in me, it pleased God to take me who separate from my womb and give me the Son, which is the Holy Ghost, in the form of the Spirit in me to reveal His Self in me. Oh, my... I, I believe I want to shout this a little. Look, let me tell you, brother. Hallelujah. When it please God. Oh, hallelujah. When it please God, a drunkard father, a mother, God bless you, Mom, I'm not saying nothing against you. But a mother know no more about God than a rabbit know of snowshoes. And a father that lay drunk on the streets. And would not even choose to go to school and long hair down my neck. And everybody hated me because I was a Kentuckian over here in Indiana. And how, oh, how it was just a stinking sight. But it pleased God. Amen. It pleased God who separated me from the womb of my mother. That he might reveal his son in me. By making a minister of the word that would stay right straight with it. That would show visions and signs and wonders and miracles and oh my. See what he's talking about? It pleased God to do that. How? Listen close to re- 16th verse now to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathens. Immediately I conferred not with the church. Amen. Amen. I never went to any bishop and asked him what I ought to do. Amen. I never went to any flesh and blood, any organizations Amen. or anything else. I never had anything to do with them. I never conferred with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to all the great holy priests and the holy fathers and all those and said, Now, you know, I had a vision. What must I do about it? I saw the blessed Lord Jesus in a the vision. They'd said, Get out of here, you what's a, you holy roller. Well, what's happened to you? No, I had all their degrees to start with. Had to, and Paul said over here, I can show you in the Scripture, that he said he had to forget everything that he ever learned Amen. and count it as nothing Amen. that he might know Christ. Yes. Oh. Yes. Neither went it up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and turned again unto Damascus. And after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter... And abode with him fifteen days, and as we read on, we find out that he and the apostle Peter never seen one another in life, never know one another, never seen one another. But when they come together, they were preaching the same gospel. Hallelujah! Oh. Well, praise the Lord. 
God's got a school. Yes, amen. Yeah. Here was Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and said, Repent every one of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for in this your sins you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Philip said, Oh, how glorious this is. I've got to do something too. Down to the, I got a call down to the Samaritan. Went down there and got to testify in the street. First thing, a sick person come up. Laid hands on him and begin jumping and leaping and said, Glory to God, here we are. Started having a big meeting. He said, If you all need the Holy Ghost, he said, What you got to do? You've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. So he took them, everyone out there, and baptized them yeah. all in Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. said, Come on, Peter, lay your hands on them now. And they got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Peter, up the house of Cornelius the same way. Paul had never even seen him or heard nothing about him. But he passed through the upper coast of Ephesus and he finds certain disciples. He found a Baptist preacher. She was. Apollos, a converted lawyer, smart, brilliant, taking the Old Testament and proven by it that Jesus was the Son of God. Yes, sir, he was a smart man. And they were shouting. They were having joy. The Bible said so. Read the 18th and 19th chapter of Acts and see if that's not right. Yeah. They were having joy. They were dancing in the Spirit, running all around you. Know. Paul said, But have you received the Holy Ghost since Amen. you believe? And to you, Baptist brethren, that tries to poke that down the people's throat, and said the original Greek said, Did you receive the Holy Ghost since or when you believed? I challenge you to bring me the Greek. I've got the original Greek in my own possession. I have also the Aramaic and the Hebrew also. Each one of them says, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? By faith are you saved. That's your faith in God. The blood keeps you clean from sin because it makes a sacrifice. The blood doesn't save you. The blood keeps you clean. <laughs> How are you fa- saved? By faith are you saved in that by? Grace, grace. God's foreknowledge calling you. You are saved and the blood makes an atonement constantly keeping you clean. And then by one Spirit you're baptized into the Holy Ghost, into the fellowship of the believers and into the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be led by the Spirit yeah. doing signs, wonders, Amen. Wait, coming on, waiting for something just a little bit. We get it. Hope we do anyhow. I told you to call me at this time, wasn't it? Just had to be a look at it. Just a, just a word or two more. Just a, it's, it's a little bit more. How long is this salvation lasting? How long? What kind of salvation is it? From church to church? From Let's turn to Hebrews 9 11. Just a minute. Just to look to see how long. Just for a few minutes. Turn over to the book of Hebrews. And let's, let's find out just how long this salvation is lasting. Yeah. See what kind of a salvation it is. <clears throat> let's read now Hebrews 9 11. But Christ becoming a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, now this is the same teacher, Paul, see? that of, the building, of this building, neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by His own blood He has entered in once, how many times? Once unto the holy place, having obtained salvation for a week. Salvation to the next revival. What kind? Eternal redemption for us. What's the word eternal mean? Eat Christ. After I have believed, no man can call Jesus Christ only by the Holy Ghost. There's these three classes of people. Unbelievers make believers and believers. But them once who has believed unto eternal life has entered into the courts Take the old tabernacle. What was the first thing he did? Enter into the courts, the Gentiles. Next was the brazing altar where they washed the sacrifice at the golden laver. The next was the killing of the sacrifice and the sprinkling of the blood upon the altar. Then once the year, Aaron anointed. Amen. <laughs> With what? With the rose of Sharon, perfume. 
with precious oil that had for a few minutes. They poured it on his head. It went plumb down to the hems of his skirts. Amen. Watch how this man had to go in behind them curtains. Once a year, packing before him the blood for the mercy seat. And he took his rod in one year and forgot it. When they went back after it, it had done butted out and blossomed. An old stick it had packed maybe for 40 years in the wilderness. Laid in that holy place. Watch. When they took out the blood of the covenant, the blood, he was anointed. And he had garments on that had little jingle bells in them. A pomegranate and a bell. And that man had to walk in such a way that every time when he moved his legs and moved like this and made his steps, he played holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Oh. Amen. What am I talking about? Here at Branham Tabernacle. You've had your chance. When a man once is anointed with the Amen. Holy Ghost to be adopted into the family of God, to be positionally placed by the Father and set into His service out here, into His purpose of life for what God has called Him for, His walk must be holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Amen. Holy, wow. holy, holy. Oh, you must turn aside to this and believe. Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Oh, you must believe all the elders said this, but holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Let His Word be first. Let it be everything that there is sunk, settled in your heart. Your walk must be in the Word. Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Oh, if you just come over here, I'll tell you what we do. We'll organize, put you in our organization. You'll be a great man. Holy, 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 unto the Lord. Holy, 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 unto the Lord. Moving on. Don't make any difference what anybody says. With call these tapes, do this, do this, do that. Do that, do that. Holy, 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 unto the Lord. You've got your eyes set towards Calvary. And there's nothing going to stop you. The very walk of your life. You're walking down the King's Highway. Anointed with the precious anointing oil. Moving oh, into the holiest of holies. Amen. amen. All right. Paul said he didn't get this from man. Now what does he say back to Galatians or lesson? Having made known to us the mystery of his will. What is his will? Made known the mysteries of his will. You just take down the ninth verse. Now I'm going to hurry right quick and get this out. Because we're running late. Oh, every word is such a Thank nugget. You, Jesus. Oh, each word is a nugget. You can just take it and just keep polishing. You can dig I can you can take one of them words out of there, take it over to Genesis and polish it. Take it over to Exodus and polish it again. You take it over to Leviticus and polish it again. And time you get over to Revelations, it's every bit Jesus. Amen. 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 You can just polish it as much as you want to. It'll be Jesus when you hit when you hit Revelation. For he said, I am he that was, which is, and shall come. I am the root and offspring of David, the morning star. I'm Alpha Omega. That's A and Z in the Greek alphabet. I am from A to Z. I am I'm all in all. <laughs> That's right. I'm he that was alive and was dead and is alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and hell. Oh, my. Amen. Every nugget you pick up here and start polishing, it'll polish right into Jesus. Yes. Oh, now, man. just a little later, and then we'll, 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 we'll stop. What are we waiting for, then? What's we waiting for? What's the purpose of it? What's the world groaning for? What's the atomic bomb hanging out of for? What's the molecules and the... Adams and oh, what's it all about? Turn Romans to eight, just a minute. What's it waiting for? What's all this waiting for? What's the time? Romans the eighth chapter, and let's begin and read about the. Um, oh, I'd say the eight. Uh,
But let's start along about the, ni- uh, the 19th verse. And it, just read right here for make it, make it real sweet. That's right. I know where you're getting to there. All right. Romans, the 8th chapter. I believe I'm right now. Yes, sir. The 8th chapter. And let's begin here about the 18th verse. Let's just begin the 14th verse. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Amen. That's right. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again Amen. to fear. Oh, I wonder if I can just hold out. Ooh, if I could just hold out now. Hold out nothing. Amen. It isn't whether I held out, it's whether he held out. Amen. Amen. I'm in him now. Yes, him. See? Yes. Well, you say, well, if I'm in him now, you, you Presbyterians said, oh, we always believe that. But your life proves that you're not unless you walk the kind of life that he walked. Amen. You believe the same gospel he preached. Amen. You say, oh, Baptists say, sure, I believe in eternal security. And go out here and smoke cigars and run to dances. And women cut their hair, paint their faces and act like I don't know what. Amen. Your fruits proves that you don't believe it. And I say, do you believe in divine healing? Oh, uh, Dr. Jones said it was so... That was in the days back. Are you hypocrite? Preach it, brother. What's the matter with you? Preach it, brother. You poor deluded child. You're so far off the gospel till it's a pity. You've been sidetracked on some muddy road on some burning dump. Don't you see here what he said? That every spirit that confesses that Jesus has not come in the flesh right now yeah. is of the wrong spirit. Yeah. The Bible said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, yeah. and forever. Amen. What He said then He is, now He's for always that way. Yes, Just listen. For ye haven't received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of a... Now after you're adopted, all right. After you're adopted, you're placed, and you understand, after the ceremony said, and you've been put into the body correctly, your son, sure, or daughter, when you're born again, you're, that's, that's your birth. But now you're positionally placed. We've not received the spirit of fear, but we have received the spirit, we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, which means my God. All right. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirits that we're, we're children of God. How does it do it? You say, glory to God, hallelujah. Don't bother me. I'm a child of God and go out and do the things you do. The Spirit of God will do the works of God. Amen. Jesus said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. See? See? If, 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 if this vine comes forth and it produced a, a bunch of grapes and the next one comes forth and produced a bunch of pumpkins, there's something wrong. Yeah. See, it's a drafted church. It's a drafted vine. It's a grafted person. And if a person by some denomination belongs to a denomination and call themselves a Christian and don't have the Holy Ghost and have the power of God and, and all these things. Now, if you go out here and act like a bunch of these, just because you, know, you spoke in tongues, I've seen devils speak with tongues. Yes, yes sir. I see him dancing in the Spirit and shouting froth at the mouth and everything else and all that. I've seen that. I'm yes. a tongue, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the Spirit of God. Amen. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if then children, heirs. Heirs of God. Jordan, heirs of Christ. If so that we suffer with Him, that we may also glorify together. For I reckon that the suffering... Let's listen to this. Oh, this isn't beautiful. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy uh, to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In us. For the earnest expectations of the creature, it calls here, it got, a little, got a little word there, a little margarita. Creation is right in Greek. Expectations of the creation. The creation is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. What's everything waiting on? What's the whole creation waiting for? The manifestations of the sons of God. It's waiting for the Amen. church to become into its position. Help us, Lord. Yes. Who was the son of God when Adam? Where was his domain? The earth. 
He, he had dominion over the earth. Is that right? Yes. He wasn't El El Elohim man. He was Jehovah. See, that is, I am God, and I've made some lesser ones under me, and I've given them a dominion, and in their domain, the dominion under them is the earth. Man had dominion over the earth, and all the whole creation is waiting for the sons of God to be manifested. Amen. Amen. Oh. We're watching for the coming of that glad millennium day when our blessed Lord shall come and catch His waiting bride away. Oh, the earth is groaning, crying for that day of sweet release when our Savior shall come back to earth again. Is that right? Yes. Amen. Waiting, God trying to place His church in position to manifest Himself, getting one that He can work through like this. Say, there's my spirit flowing freely. There it is. That, that I, I can work here. Get another one over here and place Him. I can place Him. Adoption. Placing. Manifesting. Take Him out here and put a ceremony on Him. Visit Him with an angel. Tell Him something. Now, if He's told the truth. Now, if He's just making up something, it won't work. Uh, yeah. No, no, that, that won't work. We've had a lot of that. But I mean, but I mean, manifestations of sons of God. When God manifests Himself and He sends Him out, and then He goes forth, and what He says is truth. What He does is the truth. What He does, He manifests Christ. How do you judge Him? By the way He stays with the Word, yes. right with the Word. See, that's how you know all man is by the way He stays yes. with the Word. Yes. If they speak not according to the Word, there's no life in them. Says the Bible. Amen. See, leave them away. Now let's read. Then we're, we'll have to stop because our time's getting away. All right. The tenth verse. A ninth verse, verse. Having made known to us the mystery of His will to adopt us according to His good pleasure which He has purposed in Himself. He purposes Himself before the foundation of the world. How many understands it? Amen. Amen. That in the dispensation... Oh my, here we come again. <laughs> oh, let, let, let's just pass it. <laughs> dispensation of the fullness of time do you believe in dispensations? Yeah. The Bible said so. In the dispensation of the fullness of time. What is the fullness of time? There's been a dispensation of... Uh, uh, well, there was a dispensation of the Mosaic Law. There was a dispensation of, of, of John the Baptist. There was a dispensation of Christ. There's a dispensation of church organization. There's dispensation of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now is the dispensation of adoption, what the world's waiting, groaning. And when the fullness of time comes, when the dispensation of the fullness of time, what is that fullness of time? When the dead rises, when sickness ceases, when, the, when all the earth ceases to groan, the fullness of the dispensation of time. Watch this. When in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Aren't you glad? How is he going to do it? Gather together all things in who? How do you get in Christ? By one spirit we're all baptized into one body and that body is whose body? Already judged. He took our judgment. Then what are we? When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. And every time he looks at the body, there it is, sitting there bloody. I'm in there by how the Holy Ghost. He just passes on over. Oh, my. And when the fullness of the dispensation of time that he might gather together all things in Christ, both which are in heaven. Now, if you want to talk about a name, we'll just start on it right now for a while. All the family in heaven, his name what? All the family of earth is named what? Jesus There's some fine women in here. Fine, rich, real ladies. Ladies. There's one Miss Branham. Miss William Branham. She's my wife. She goes home with me. <laughs> See, the rest of it goes with your husband. <laughs> There's one great living church of the living God. She bears His name. Yes. She's filled with His Spirit. That's right. 
I don't say I don't condemn their good works. I don't condemn their hospitals and good things they do. I think that's wonderful and a God's blessing to poor suffering humanity. I don't condemn all these other things they're doing. Fine, that's just right. And they're great organizations and millions of dollars. I'd sure rather see that in bootleg joints on the corner. Amen. Anytime, I certainly honor them as ministers standing in the pulpit. But when it comes to the gathering together at the end yeah. of the dispensation, it'll be waiting for the yeah. manifestations of yeah. the sons of God yeah. in that dispensation, that He might gather all together yeah. all yeah. that has been brought into Christ. Lord. What is Christ? How many? How do we get into Him? First Corinthians twelve by one Spirit we are all baptized yeah. into one body, which is the body of Christ and made partakers of every gift and Amen. everything that he's got. Is that right? Yeah. And the whole earth is groaning, crying, yeah. waiting yeah. for the manifestations that when Christ and His church yeah. will unite Amen. together. Yes. That dispensation of the fullness of time, gather together in all Christ, both which are in heaven and in earth and even in Him, earth even in Him, in whom we have a Tamed on an inheritance. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, Brother Neville, forgive me for taking this. Time. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. I, that word inheritance. Oh, Amen. Oh, Amen. 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 I know we love it. It's like kids. Amen. Amen. I don't. Amen. I hope I'm not crazy. <laughs> I, I, I just. I don't Amen. think I. Amen. But, oh. Amen. A uh, what? An inheritance. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> we have obtained an inheritance. Amen. Somebody has to leave you something. Amen. Yeah. God, before the foundation of the world, left you something. Yeah. A name written on the book. That when the Lamb would be slain, you'd be recognized with it. Yeah. Oh, amen. <laughs> Let's say that for tonight. Let's just read on this a little bit. My, my. How we ever get to the third verse tonight? Third chapter. We haven't even got four or five verses out of this. Now we're fixed to close all. I just have to read it and let it go. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being... What? How do we get this inheritance? How do we get it? Because we walked upright? How do we get this inheritance? Because we were predestinated. Amen. Amen. Thank you. My Armenian brothers, I know that's awfully hard. I don't even to hurt. But it just does me so good to know that it, you're, you're, you got it. You got it, brother. All right. You just don't see it. You got it. It's the same. See? You're all right. See? You're all right. But... You, you, <laughs> Oh, but it's so good to look at. <laughs> it's like what Brother Nabal said about the arcade that time. Get your step ladder, go around and see what you got. Yes, sir. That's what this is what God's Holy Spirit is our step ladder to tell us what we got. See? See? An inheritance. Oh my. Being uh, what kind of an inheritance? Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. When he was before he was a papa, before he was God, before he was a savior, before he was a healer, before all of this, he predestinated. Yeah. Put the Lamb's name on the book. Yeah. Look down to by his foreknowledge and see your name. Put yeah. it on there too. Yeah. What is it? And that's why we come into the world, born by sinful parents. We walk around on the world, you know. First thing you know, like that little hook nosed Jew, Paul, you know, and they were carrying out the first thing, something says, Here, 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 here. You say, Oh, Abba, Father. <laughs> here we begin to come. See, predestined us to our inheritance in Him which was predestinated to us. We inherited it before the foundation of the world. Amen. See? Oh. For his own purpose to work out his own good will. That's exactly to be a God and Savior. In whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of the truth. And who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. The truth of the gospel. And what gospel? There's only one gospel. Amen. Galatians 1 said, Though an angel preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. This is the gospel. The gospel of your salvation, not another... 
There is not another, not, not another name given under heaven whereby Amen. you must be saved, but in the name of what? Oh, me. In whom after that you believe, you were sealed. Oh, oh amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. After you believe, how can we just run over that, brother? Let's just leave it for tonight. What do you say? Oh, my. I, I just can't go any, any farther now. Let's leave it for tonight. I just can't leave that word seal, how you get in there. <laughs> Inheritance by predestination. I inherited something. What inheritance? There had to be somebody leave me an inheritance. Why well, do you say Jesus let you inheritance? Beg your pardon. Uh, Jesus never left me an inheritance. Jesus never left you an inheritance. He only came down and paid for your inheritance. Brought you to your inheritance. But your name was put on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. Amen. God gave you your inheritance. Your inheritance is first. Jesus only come... A lot of, here's a way to try to make it. God said, well, a lot of people lost. I don't want to be saved, so I'll send Jesus down and perhaps maybe he'll, somebody feel sorry and know what I've done and, and get saved. Oh, mercy. I wouldn't run my office like that. Even as poor as I do run it sometimes. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do it like that. How about God? God, by His foreknowledge, seen exactly who would be saved and who wouldn't be yeah, saved. Amen. He sent Jesus to save those that He had already yes. chosen. Amen. Didn't Paul say five verses behind this? Yes. That He chose us in Him before there even was Amen. a world. Amen. Amen. That's our inheritance. Yes. God chose us. Yes. And let Jesus come and pay the price. That what? His shedding of His blood that no sin would be accounted to us. Yes. Nothing you do. Well, if you, he that sins willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there's no more sacrifice. Now, and there's where you'd rise up and say, how about that, Brother Brown? But just remember, see, who have received the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. They never received the truth. They just received the knowledge of it. Yes. Amen. Now, that's right. See? It's impossible for those who were once enlightened and made partakers of the Holy Ghost tasted the power of the good word. Like them borderline believers back there. So many wrote me letters on that. Those borderline believers walked right there. Joshua and Caleb went right over there. Why? Now we're going to call that the Holy Ghost. The land out there. Here they are back here. Or up here. Say this is the Holy Ghost. And they're back out here, you see. There's where the promise is. Is there. Well, it says, send out ten spies. One out of each tribe. So that all of those tribes should know what our inheritance is. Where we'll be placed over there. Where will we be placed? So I'm going to send out some spies. They all got there and said, Oh my. Oh, we need to call the Holy Rollers. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 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 we couldn't do that, see. Joshua and Caleb said, I'll see what it looks like. <laughs> so they come over here and looked all around. My other reached up here, cut off a big cluster of burger grapes and come back down and said, Boy, she's fine. Come on, I said, Fine. Here it is. Take some of it. <laughs> Oh, that's good, but oh, look at those big... Oh, we couldn't do it. Stand against all them big denominations, all those big things. Oh, it's too bad we can't do it. Oh, sir. No, sir. And they began to say, Oh, let's go back to the flesh pots of Egypt. We might as well stay down there. We can't do it. This road's too straight. We can't do this. We can't do that. Oh, Caleb says, Stay still, all of you. Joshua said, Shut up, every one of you. Let me say something. Oh, alas, 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 we can't do it. Oh, we couldn't. Well, if I had to quit my card party, Brother Bram, I have let my hair grow out like some old woman. <laughs> if I had to take my little shorts off, I, if I had to quit, you know, and if I had to give up my cigars, if I had to do that. You poor, deliberate, exact. Yes. Just can't do it. Joshua said, oh, it's good. Hallelujah. We can take it. Amen. What was it? They were looking at the big cities that were walled up. Joshua and Caleb was looking at a promise God made. Stay with the word. Hallelujah. Stay with the word. Father, Peter said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. Far. The promise isn't to you. What promised land? Amen. 
and unto your children, and to them that's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Don't let this hurt. Closing, please don't. See? There you, pilgrim holiness and Nazarenes. You come right into sanctification. Walk right up here to the spot to where you even could see the grapes. And then turned and went back. Amen. See what's happened? That's what's the matter. You never walked over into the land. Show me one Nazarene or pilgrim holiness right here on the grounds today having great healing campaigns and signs and wonders done. Show me one. You settled down with Egypt. Went back to the garlic pot. You stopped the Kadesh Barnea. That's right. Watch. Let me give you a spot in Hebrews 6 chapter. For it is impossible for those which were once enlightened... You know better. If you don't, you know it now. And was made partakers and tasted a heavenly gifts. Tasted. See, people go to church and sit around there and say, you know, they, they could be right. That, that, that could be right. It could be just the same. But I tell you, mm, boy, it takes a lot of faith to do that. Taste the heavenly gifts. And it's counted the blood of the covenant. An unholy thing which he is sanctified. Like a preacher. His mother sends him away. He says, i got a calling to be a servant of the Lord. All right? The first thing I have to do is wash over the board, honey, and I will send you away to some school. The worst thing she ever done. Yes. Right. That's right. They'll take all out of him if God trying to put it in. Then, now watch. For if we sin willfully, willfully sin, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, the knowledge, seen in the Scripture, know that the Bible says He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. See that it's the knowledge of the truth to see that we turn away and count the blood of the covenant. A man say, oh yes, I believe in God. All right, you make the first step. Sure, I believe in sanctification. All right, you're on the borderline. Right up here, ready to receive the Holy Ghost. But you look over and say, ah, I don't know about that. If I'd have to act like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. You know what they call them people? <laughs> I don't know where I could do that or not. No, I believe I'll just go over and join ties. And you know what happens? He said, it's impossible for them to ever enter in. They have sinned away their day of grace. The Bible said so. I know that's rough. But the Bible said, have tasted the heavenly gifts and counted the blood of the covenant wherewith. They say, I believe in sanctification, a good, clean, holy life. Sure. But you, when you've seen the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism and all these other things of the Bible, and you have done what? You've counted the blood of the covenant wherewith you were sanctified, an unholy thing. Yes. Yes. What in the world brought you up there, man? What, me, what kept you from being a low-down sinner? What took sin out of your life and smoking and drinking and women and things out of your life that shouldn't have been there? What did that? Amen. The blood of the covenant. Yeah. Amen. Then you come up close enough to taste the grapes from the other land and ashamed of the gospel? Amen. Afraid of your denomination? God have mercy. That's it. Yes, sir. Count of the blood of the covenant an unholy thing and done despite to the works of grace. It's impossible for him to ever enter into the land. What happened? I asked you. Now, I'm a typologist. And any man that knows the Bible is a typologist. Did one of those men ever hit that promised land? Not one of them. Who did it? Who went over there? Those who went first. Come back and said we can take it. Amen. We can have the Holy Ghost because God said so. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, if I'd repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, I should receive the Holy Ghost for the promises of me. I'm willing to do it. Yeah. Mine's the promise is mine. You get it? Amen. Now the promise is mine. I receive it, it's mine. Sure it is. There's the only one. Oh, you say, but Brother Branham in the resurrection, they won't be there. Amen. Oh, they won't? No, sir. Jesus said, they said, and you're making yourself as great as Moses. And you said you was, you saw Abraham. And he said, and, 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 and Abraham's been dead. Why, you're not, you're not over 50 years old. And you said you saw Abraham. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. <laughs> 
Oh my, I am ever present, eternal God. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, I am. See? The ever present God. The Elohim. I am. Then he took up, he's going to kill him, man. He said, Well, our fathers eat man in the wilderness for 40 years. God rained bread right down out of heaven and fed him. They went to church and they were good church members <laughs> for 40 years. My old mama died right in this church and everything like that. My fathers eat man in the wilderness for 40 years. And Jesus said, And they're every one dead. Oh, hey, dead means the eternal separation. There are every one dead. But I say unto you, that I'm the bread of life that come from God out of heaven. A man eats this bread of the Spirit. He's got eternal life and he can't perish. And I'll raise him up in the last day. <laughs> oh, brother, isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Wonderful. Wonderful. Isn't Jesus our Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard. What is recorded in God's Word? Isn't Jesus our Lord wonderful? Is that right? We see His discerning Spirit going through our midst. We see Him performing miracles and signs and wonders. We hear it written right out of the Word here and see it confirmed right out there. Oh, my. Eyes have seen, ears have heard. What's recorded in God's Word is not Jesus, my Lord, wonderful. In another two minutes or three, there will be a water baptismal service rendered here. And I'm, those who are going to be baptized, let the women go over here and the man over on this side. And now the man to my left over here on this side and the women over here. There will be sisters in there with clothes ready. And if any man or any woman here this morning that's convinced that you believe in the Word of God and you believe that God keeps His promise that if a man will thoroughly repent of all his sins, now the blood hasn't done a thing yet. No, it's just your faith in God. God's calling. Just calling you. That's what's doing it now. I've never been baptized. What, what if I could just start and do different? That's, that's the thing. Start, then you do different if you make your start. See, amen. you got to turn around. Yes, yes. Amen. Start. Yes. You say, well, I, I, I never seen it just like that. Oh, brother dear, I want you to show me one scripture for any man. I've offered this for 31 years of ministry around the world before bishops and so forth. For one person, one person was ever baptized any other way that, but in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone that wasn't baptized in Jesus' name had to come and be baptized over again. Yes. In the name. God only had one name. And His name is Jesus. Amen. That was His Son. He took the name of His Son. God, now Jesus, the body, was a man. We know that. That was the Son of God that was overshadowed. Now, we do not believe in the oneness type of uh, people that says, God's like your finger. We believe there's three attrib- attributes of God. Three attributes of God. God manifested in, but there's one God. See, that's right. We do not believe, that we believe in the, uh, now, uh, let me make it like this. We believe that God lived in three offices. He had an office on earth one time. Now, you women go to this side, and you men go to this side. It's getting ready. And they're getting ready for baptismal service now. And now, God had three offices. One of them was called the fatherhood or the father dispensation. The other was called the sonship. The other was called Holy Ghost. Now, today, what, what dispensation is Father working in today? Holy Ghost. What was He in the days going on by? Jesus. What was He in the days before that? But it was just one God. Is that right? His Father... Son and Holy Ghost. Those three. Those three offices of one God. 
One God. But now, Father is not a name. Is that right? I want to ask you. Now, I want to give you Matthew 28, 19, where Jesus said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name, in a n e Name of the Father. I want to see how well you know your Scripture. Tell me when I get off the line. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Is that all true? Speak with new tongues, take up serpents. Now, I'm going to quote to you Matthew 9. And listen, I asked any historian, now this is on tapes, this goes to all the world. I asked any historian to come to me and bring me any text of Scripture, any text of, uh, not Scripture, any text of Scripture or any history, any verse of history that ever showed that any Protestant, that anybody ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost until the Catholic Church ordained it in the Nicene Council. Now that's on tapes that goes across the world. Amen. Thirty-seven different languages are translated in. I'll pay your way across the ocean. Amen. Right. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is a false, bogus, Catholic dogma Amen. and not a Christian baptism. Amen. Right. Luther brought it from the Catholic Church with catechism. Wesley adopted it. Come on. But this is the day of the manifestation of the yeah, sons of God. Yeah, when the mysteries have been hid since the foundation yeah, of the world yeah. is to be made known. Yeah. This is the hour. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Remember, there was never a person in the Bible ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. For 300 years after the death of the last apostle, there was no one ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. They had, I've read both pre-Nicene Fathers, the Nicene Council, and from there they've organized what they call the Christian Universal Church and made an organization out of it and forced all people to it, which was the Catholic Church. The very word Catholic means universal. A universal Christian church. Worldwide, one church to cover the world, and it's Christianity. They forced people to it in there. They adopted, they'd taken down Venus and put up Mary. They're taking down Paul or Jupiter and put up Paul. It's still pagan. Right. The Catholic Church come out of there and after 500 years, uh, they got a play going on in Louisville now. I've been here. They had the Ten Commandments not long ago. I wish you'd ever take one of the, if they could, of the 1,500 years of dark ages. I wish they'd put that on. 1,500 years of pagan persecution. When they forced everybody and killed them, murdered them, strung them up, put an ox on one, an ox on the other hand, and make them either kiss a crucifix or start one this way or that way. I put my hand right in Switzerland behind the post is where they stood there and cut their tongues out and called them witches and everything else. It's exactly right. Right. That same spirit exists today. It's just a law that holds it down. Wait till it gets its freedom. The Bible said so. Yes. Just wait till it shows its color till it gets a chance to. You might vote it in pretty soon for all I know. Yeah. It will. It'll come. There's no way of keeping it out. It's got to come. That's right. It's got to come. It's coming. So when it does, you just watch. But brother, you want to know this one thing. I know who I have believed. Marching right on. That's it. There's a time when the, when the rider, when I told the rider of the Lam, Lamza, Lamza Bible, when he looked and seen that ancient sign of God, just exactly that, exactly. Three little dots in it. I said, what so is? He said, that's God in three attributes. I said, such is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. He looked at me and said, do you believe that? And I said, yes, sir. He said, I've seen that discernment the other night. I thought she was a prophet of the Lord. I said, God bless your heart. But his arm around me. I said, now I know it is. Amen. He said, these American people don't even know what. I said, they don't even know nothing. That's 
said they're trying to take an Eastern book and make a Western book out of it. They don't even know their Bible. That's it. He said, there's no other name given under heaven, no other name for everybody that's ever baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such a thing as three persons and one God. Amen. And that is Brother Lamza, Dr. Lamza, the translator of the Lamza Bible, which is a bosom friend of Eisenhower and all the great diplomats of the world and everything else. Throwed his arms around me and said, someday they'll shoot you for that. Amen. But said, remember, all of those people die for a cause. Amen. I like to be like when old Peter was sitting in the prison, his little old boy in there. He was all nervous. He said, oh, what's the matter? He said, you know you're going to be executed? Peter said, yep. Thank God. He said, well, you're fixing to die today. He said, yep. He said, well, aren't you afraid? He said, nope. He said, you must be one of them they call the Christians. He said, yep. He said, what happened? And he told him. He sat down and told him the story. And as it went on, come down. He said, and I could have been free this morning. I could have went and joined some of their denominations and just God, lived on. I could have been free. But I started out the gate of the city. And I seen one come and walking in. I know who he was. I said, Lord, where are you going? He said, I'm going back to be crucified again. Amen. He said, I come out on back. Just then he said, whose name's Simon Peter? He said, here I am. They were ready for you. Said I've been waiting for you. <laughs> Walked right on out. That boy touched him on the shoulder and said, "Wait a minute, Simon. I accept that God do, and now I'm not afraid. Let mine be the next one." Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. It's, it's dripping with blood. Yes. Yes. yes, it's dripping with blood. This Holy Ghost gospel. Is dripping with blood, the blood of the disciple who died for the truth. This Holy Ghost gospel keeps dripping with blood. The first one to die for this Holy Ghost plan was John the Baptist, but he died like a man. Then came the Lord Jesus, they crucified him. He preached that the Spirit would save man from sin. There's Peter and Paul and John the Divine. They gave up their lives so this gospel could shine. They mangled their blood like the prophets of old, so the true word of God could honest be told. Their souls under the altar crying, how long for the Lord to punish those who've done wrong? Listen, but there's going to be more who will give their life's blood for this Holy Ghost gospel and its crimson blood. It's dripping with blood. Yes, it's dripping with blood. This Holy Ghost gospel, it's dripping with blood. The blood of the disciples who died for the truth? This Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. Just a scripture before we go. And they said unto Peter and the rest of them, Man and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? Peter said unto them, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to them that's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Lord bless now. While we get out of the way, you can watch the baptism as we... Thank you.